All right, guys, welcome back to our conversations. Let me first of all say thank you so much for your comments, your feedback, your chats, your conversations, all that has kept this series going forward. We appreciate you. Please keep talking to us on our social media platforms, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, Google us, WhatsApp us, yani just anything that you can do to keep this conversation going, please uh, let us know how this series is impacting your life. We've been looking at, through this conversation, the church has left the building, and we have been looking at the mountains of society, and today we have an opportunity again to have this conversation, even as the Lord leads us into the next level of church growth. It's not a building you want to feel, it's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to feel, it's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to feel. It's my heart, this empty space is what you wanted all along. That song is true in its expression because it's talking about that the church is, that God is not filling the building, but he's filling the empty spaces of our hearts. One of the mountains that the church must continue to find expression on as a way of filling the empty gaps in people's hearts is a mountain of faith. The mountain of faith is where our belief systems are created and constructed. It is the place where the ideologies and theologies and the philosophies of life are created. It is where we have the rise of atheism, the rise of capitalism, the rise of socialism, the rise of Islam and Buddhism. Every person in this world, 7.3 billion people, are trying to make sense of what they believe in. Whether you believe in something or whether you do not believe, you're still believing. Even believing that you do not believe is actually a belief system. So whether you are out of the faith or in the faith, every one of us is holding to a, an idea, an ideology, a theology that determines how they live their lives. For the Muslim, there is a belief system that is captured in their mind that dictates how they live. For a, Buddh for a Buddhist, there is a way by which they live as, as, as a way of, of showing what they truly believe in. And so this mountain of faith is such an important expression for the church. I am not talking about religiosity that we continue to see on Sunday mornings. I'm not talking about spirited emotionalism where we gather together just to sing Kumbaya and then walk home feeling nice about ourselves. I'm not talking about the tantalization of our emotions because some churches have been built upon this aspect of emotionalism. That is not what it means to take over the mountain of faith. The mountain of faith is by going directly to what Jesus tells us in the commissioning of Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20 where after he has told us the geography of our influence which is all nations he gives us the way the mandate by which we should go into the nations and he says teaching them teaching them everything that I have commanded you. So that means that when we go into the spaces of the broken hearts, we are actually releasing the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, the ways and the principles of the kingdom. And so God is no longer looking for a religious institution. God is no longer looking for a religious person woman and man who is only centered on religiosity. Some of our places of worship have actually been turned into statements of fashion show where we parade ourselves so that people can see us. It is a, it is a pollution of, of the Pharisee mentality because for them they were only focused on their outward appearance and yet they were dying in the inside. The mountain of faith is number one where we reclaim the truth where we walk away from these corruption systems that have engrafted the body of Christ, where we reclaim the truth. 
Because Paul told Timothy that in the last days, people will actually gather around speakers who will only speak to those things that uh, can tantalize their ears, itching ears, Paul calls them. Number one, going and developing and going deeper into the mountain of faith means that we must, number one, reclaim the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And then number two, we must realize that we are on a mandate to spread the gospel. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that all the kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our God and of his Messiah, that all the mountains of society will flow onto the mountain of God. It is the power of the mountain of faith. We must begin to create a belief system in the minds of those people that we minister to. The broken hearts receiving grace for tomorrow. Those who have been deserted having a place to rise up again. It is the command of Isaiah 61. Those who are hurting can find joy. This is the true gospel. It has nothing to do with ambitions and self-titles and, and self-promotion and self-preservation. Reclaiming the mountain of faith. And so in these end times, in the post-COVID times, the true church is a church that will reclaim the truth and find its mandate to minister to the broken heart. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. Again, God bless you. We look forward to having more conversation like this. And remember, the church has left the building. God bless you. Amen.